Well, the dust seems to be settling on uh, South Africa's recent art controversy, but the painting entitled The Spear has brought to light the importance, or lack thereof, of art in Africa. Africa 360 now goes on an artistic discovery where we focus on how it's formed part of African culture for centuries, from rock art to activism to revealing social and political ills. But remember, art can also be misused to promote propaganda and to marginalize. This week, Africa 360 explores what art means for Africans, from a young Zimbabwean painter to an art gallery owner in Lagos. And we ask, what role does art play in Africa and how can it be used for good on our continent? From ancient rock painting to beautiful wood carvings, Africans have always used art as a form of expression, but contemporary art has become a critical eye of the continent, highlighting social ills and political issues affecting Africa. This week, Africa 360 brings you artists who work on these issues. We kick off with Zimbabwe's Kuzanai Chiwurai. He's best known for his paintings, but he's also embraced photography, film, music, and even publishing. I recently went into Kuzi's studio here in Johannesburg to chat about his work. For many, Kuzanai is an artist activist. Known as Kuzi, he never shies away from the provocative and many of his works explore the murky underworld of African politics. It's very diverse, I think. Uh, I've worked with posters, I've worked um, with film, with music, with sculpture. I think a lot of the work depends on what kind of exhibition I'm taking part in or what exhibition I am sort of working on currently. In his most recent major exhibition, State of the Nation, he interacts with the changing identities of African leaders. The exhibition holds a mirror up to both the past and present in a continent that has had more violent conflicts than any other. The idea around it was sort of looking at um, African independence since the 1960s, um, how it was changed visually. It's interesting to like the images from the 60s were one of celebration and like new optimism. The images then reflected that I think within the artwork. Those images changed over time through the 60s to the 70s, um, late 70s, when corporations started to get involved in African politics and realizing that to be able to run governments a lot of capital was required like to build infrastructure with the Cold War coming into place. Um, non-aligned movements and then to contemporary African politics. So this is interesting how um, the visual aesthetics from 1960 to I think present day has completely changed. So it was an examination of that so in that you can see the relationship between the state and the nation. So within those images you'd find it be started off where state and nation were very synchronized and very balanced because they both wanted the same things, they wanted to achieve the same things. As time went, the imbalance started to take place where the state didn't recognize the nation or it imposed itself on the nation or mm -hmm. it wanted more or it didn't give back. So that balance started to take, that imbalance started to take place. And within state and nation, you also then start to examine um, what creates the state. Does the nation create the state or the state create the nation? And under what conditions does, do both of them exist or their own creation? Kuz is not afraid to speak his mind. That's highlighted in this next piece, The Birth of a New Nation. Well, it was in two sections. It was like um, an installation and then some drawings and some photographs, I think. It was, it was interesting, I think, kind of like the approach to it. Well, what I did was I took um, a speech that was written, well, this installation where I took a speech that was written by um, the president. And then 
prepared the installation as if it was the day before the speech was supposed to be made. And then, but then unfortunately, the speech was never said because the person was assassinated. So, I think also if you read the contents of the speech, it's quite an inspiring speech. Um, and its composition and what it says, but then it's never said or never expressed or kind of never realized in some sense. So that was kind of like what it was about, that some of these words um, like post-independence are, are sometimes just words I never fully realized in some sense. Kuzi's work challenges the political status quo in Africa and he's not afraid to question and criticize the continent's leaders. We give them far too much respect. You see, that kind of thing is all it's built on a traditional sense of hierarchy within African families, like the father's the head of the family and hence the head of the nation. And essentially that's how a lot of African presidents rule. You also think of Zuma, he's like head of the nation and then head of his large family. That's how we see it. Zimbabwe, Mugabe is the father of the nation, Nelson Mandela was the father of the nation, Kwame Nkrumah was the father of the nation. You see, this father um, okay. complex that we carry is one of the biggest problems. This father complex, according to Kuzi, is the main reason the continent hasn't reached its true potential when it comes to development. Uh, that would be naive of Africans to do, to say we've done pretty well. I think we haven't done pretty well. I think we, like, we, we get there slowly and then we undo it. We get there slowly and then we undo it. I think we haven't been really honest with ourselves, essentially. I mean, there's a lack of honesty as to what it is we want, what can be delivered within a time frame. Well, look at Egypt. Like now, the country is run by a military council. Look at um, Libya. Libya, the same. There was a coup recently in in Mali. In Mali. Yeah, it's like. All these things that are taking place, are we really ready for that kind of particular change that requires um, understanding of human rights, understanding of basic needs, um, water, health, education? Are we ready to provide those things consistently without fail? We're not ready to do that. It's evident here in South Africa, we are not ready to efficiently provide those things on a standard level nationally. It's not possible. They lack like discipline to do that. His work and stance on Africa have landed him in hot water, though. He was kicked out of his home country, Zimbabwe, for depicting President Robert Mugabe with horns. Oh, it was interesting what the media had been saying um, at the time, like these draconian laws he had passed. We will never accept a return of the previous farm holders, those who left the country to go to Australia or South Africa to come back and take over. Never, ever, ever. I think it was also just at the time of the elections, so this kind of juxtaposition of these pull ups were good and evil. So that's essentially what was behind the whole. Um, the image, essentially. Bold as his work is, Kuzi sees himself more as someone who highlights ills rather than change them. Art has never changed anything. It has always documented what has taken place. Um, it's given us, I think, given people an opportunity to view things very differently. I don't think you can make a change in that can change the state of politics. That is very unlikely. Um, one, it's owned, it's either owned by a private individual or owned by an institution, therefore it's not a work that's supposed, to, it's not a work that ends up in, in, like, in every person's home, so it's a privatization of creativity, but then at the same time, it offers an opportunity to view the world 
in a different way, to document those differently through film, I mean, paintings, drawings. So I don't think it necessarily changes anything. It might change the way you look at things, but not necessarily change anything politically or socially. I think mean, that's where I'm liking.